Welcome into your step today. Welcome to our time with the Minerals Commission today. A couple of weeks ago, it came to light that a uh, government had granted a mining license, a lease for mining of lithium to a company to start the prospecting of the mineral in our territory. And the CEO of the Minerals Commission was on our program to explain what the terms of the mining lease granted to the company where and we were not able to finish that conversation today he's back at the table and we'll look again at the terms of that lease granted to atlantic lithium and perhaps put to bed some of the rumors concerning mining in the kakum national park L yesterday i think it was monday um mr ac had the opportunity to respond to those rumors those stories those reports by the c SOs that a uh, mining license had been granted to a company to go into the Kakum National uh, Park and the CEO said that was not true. Mr. Isi is back at our table and will be engaging his thoughts on this and other matters with regards to our lithium mining agreement. So Isi, thank you for making time once again to join us and welcome back to the table. The Kakum thing was big yesterday. The Minerals Commission was on all, almost all the major newspapers on the front pages talking about no mining in Kakum National Park. It was an emphatic no for you, wasn't it? Yes, no mining. At all? At all. And so we the, will not grant. the application has been deleted. Yes. It's, There's it's, no possibility of we it, going it, back it to it. It won't happen. It will not happen. It will not happen. But are we drawing attention to some of these things that perhaps people are finding all these minerals in our forests and will it draw the wrong eyes? Uh, what, what should we do about that? Tema, maybe good morning and then uh, to our viewers. Maybe that's a decision as a nation we will have to make. What do we do with all these minerals that are potentially found in these are reserves and parks all over Ghana. What we need to do with it. So there's maybe, a potential. Maybe, maybe, maybe they are there. I mean, you can deny them. They are there. We can't pretend. I mean, that's one thing that we shouldn't do. We can't pretend. They are there. <laughs> the reports are there. They are, they are facts. Uh, the, the, the quantity, the grade, what kind of minerals. Do we maybe, know? Maybe some we know. The reports have been there all these years. Geological survey and whatever we also have in our records. The exact, uh, what do you call it, quantity we have, what type of minerals, grid and all those things. Those are the kind of, perhaps, uh, uh, things that need to be done if we want to. But as I said, nothing will happen in Kaku. Uh, to your question, whether or not uh, all these minerals across Ghana that potentially we have in the forest, what do we do with them? Do we mine? or we should just uh, leave them there to protect the forest or the reserves. It's a decision we need to make as a nation. But can we uh, protect the resources? If we say, if we choose the route of protecting, keeping the forest intact, don't go there with machines, whether it's underground or surface, don't go there. Do we have what it takes to actually, like in this Kakum situation, can we keep off unwanted eyes and equipment from the forest in its entirety? Tema, there are no two ways about this. Once you make a decision that we're not going to touch it, then you have to marshal all the resources you have from Aminatu to Zinabu to protect it. You can't go around that. If you decide that the forest should not be a, a new issue, it should be off limits. All the forest reserves and national parks should be off limits for mining activities then you have to protect it. We have to. It's a decision we have to make. We have to. You can't go around it. So for now, our the, the alternative is that, is no but, but, then, but then if, if you pretend that, oh, uh, 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 you not do it by this happening, then you are being hypocritical. So to your question, once you make the decision, you have to protect it. So now our position is no mining in the forest. No, there's, there's, there's nothing like that. I can tell you uh, what the minister said. The minister says prospecting or exploration. I mean, that came to the papers, you know, suspended until otherwise or until directed by him. Okay? 
as we speak, mining is taking place in some reserves. So, for example, uh, parts of New Monta Chim's concession, Chirano, the entire uh, Ghana bauxite since 1930, you know, has been happening and all those things. So, yes, yeah, some mining is taking place properly, following all the protocols, following all the rules regarding how it should be done. So that has been happening, and it's been happening for, if you like, 50 to 70 or 100 years. It's been around. We've been mining forests all these decades. Okay? Yes. But to answer your question, as to whether we should decide as a nation that, look, no mining forest reserves, it should be off limits, that's a decision we need to make as a country. And once you make that decision, it means that you have to marshal all your resources but to protect them. But haven't you made the decision? If you're saying Ghana Mangan no, we, is, we've is not making, made, no, we've not made, no, 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 let, let me, let, let me set the record straight. There's no law in Ghana today which says that mining is banned in forests. I need to correct that before we start another misinformation. Before we start creating another panic or creating another problem. Okay? There is no law in Ghana, as far as I'm concerned, which says that you can't mine in forests. You can't go and extract a mineral in forest. If you want to mine a mineral or extract a mineral in forest, there are rules governing that. There are certain protocols. There are certain rules you have to follow. Okay? That is there. So let's, let's separate that from maybe illegal mining activities in some forests that we've seen over the you know years. That's also a different matter. And then your main question is, what do we do with all these minerals that we've been told are lying in our forest reserve? And I'm saying to that, the answer to that question is that as a nation, we will have to make that decision. So could that be the basis then? We, we have to the make that decision. In the first place. If others have done it, um, you know, the right way, like you've mentioned, 60, 70 years, mining has been going on in some of the reserves successfully and the land is still intact the, the forest is still intact could that be the basis for why the application was made and was it rejected on populist grounds or was it rejected based on concerns that the minerals commission and its partners had and what may those concerns have been oh the, the it's quite straightforward when you make an application we take you to a certain process and then when we discover that some of the areas that you want to mine okay, are in areas that we cannot allow. We reject it. So let me tell you what happened. Thursday morning, I had gone to Metro TV to discuss this uh, lithium thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have and the right... We'll get to that. Yeah, we have the right to educate the public on what government has done. I mean, we have to do that to, to prevent, again, misinformation and people, because there are a whole lot of things people are putting out there about the lithium, day, which is wrong. So I go to the office after the metro program. Then I find a letter my secretary brought to me. And then she said, oh, you are being invited. Minerals Commission is being invited to a program by the CSOs. We attend anyway. And I said, oh, it's around 11 now. That's too late. So we can't make it. So their program went ahead because they had asked us to come and have a discussion and contribute. It is normal when they are doing anything related to mining. We do that all the time. So we couldn't attend because we got the invitation late. So then they had their seminar or workshop. So it was at that workshop that one, I think Mustafa, um, I'm talking about what is online or what, what, broke, what made the news headline, had said that Kakum National Park is being targeted for mining based on information they have picked from our website. So that is what happened. And then everybody picked it friday saturday sunday myself it was sent to me uh, my worry is that this is something that was rejected long ago well, my that's rejection also oh yes website. yes 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 you know my worry is that in the same way in which they invited us for this program they could have just placed a call and finally say look we have chance upon this information we've seen this thing and we called you on monday you see yes you know and that is it the case can you confirm Indeed, are you going ahead with something like this, or is there an application? What has happened to you? What's the status? And then we'll respond. But then they put out this information there that the the thing is being 
you know, it's about to be granted, it's at validation stage and all those things. And then it triggered this alarm. I mean, look at this beauty. We don't want to lose you that. See, and, yeah, and, yeah. and a lot of Ghanaians no, no, are not but, but, but at, when they remember but, but, Cape Coast, but they remember we should, Kakum for the we should stop walkway. this kind of behavior. It doesn't help anybody. Okay? Some journalists do it. Some also don't do it. I mean, nothing, and a particular the fact that we have this right to information. Okay? Every day, we answer questions on right to information. Okay? People are applying that, that. Can you give us information? We give them. So what is preventing them from saying, look, uh, we've heard about this or we've seen this. Can you confirm it, whether it's true or not? And then you put that information there. It's on our website. Uh, it's about validation stage. So the place is being targeted. And the only when the statement came out, then they came back and said, oh, what about the others? We will respond. But tell me, a simple call. Okay, or information from Minas Commission about the status of this will have saved us all this problem. And then for three, four, five days, we were spending time, you know, trying to deal with this, and that set the whole country ablaze. Okay, I can understand. Passions were high yeah, because yeah, those, yeah. those canopy yes. walkways are one of no, it, the it, signals. I mean, so look, look when, at it. When you're outside Ghana and you're thinking about places to visit as, as a tourist, and we have this, you know, beyond the return initiatives and all that. And you're thinking, and these are some of the scenes that come uh, at, when you search for places to visit in Ghana, Kakum National Park, obviously holding a dear place in the heart of Ghana. It's not just for natives of the central region there, but the Minerals Commission did issue the statement on November 12, um, debunking the, the rumors saying that the application by the High Street Limited was rejected and therefore cannot be processed or considered whatsoever, and that the Commission had deleted the application from the online mining cadaster and an assurance to the public that no mineral right, whether for prospecting or mining, shall be considered or granted in the Kakum National Park. Mr. Martin Kwekwe, the Chief Executive of the Minerals Commission, signed that statement that was uh, circulated to media houses and, and media platforms. So the assurance is, is concrete. The canopy walkway remains as it is. The animals in the Kakum National Forest will be safe there. No mining in that forest indefinitely and the forestry commission will protect it let's move on but the conversation around i want us to have that conversation what should we do with the reserves in the the mining deposits in our forest reserves and the how mineral, can we the mineral deposits mi mineral deposits in the reserves how can we do it responsibly because that is the concern for many that we will lose this forest cover the green economy to conversations about the the environment impacts impacted by climate change and all that so we need to have those conversations i think we should we should book a date we'll, to, to we'll, do that. We'll, we'll have to come and discuss that and then i'll tell you my what i think personally you can tell me now oh uh, as to whether or not we should mine the forest mm. uh, because we need to discuss this little okay. thing again there's a lot of falsehood and one of one of the perceptions is that uh -huh. this uh, lithium agreement would not be to the benefit of Ghanaians. Well, that's why some we are even here. hold mm -hmm. the perception that perhaps some monies have changed hands to get some government officials and other players to agree to this this deal so that they can also get something back in return. I'm sure that you've heard some of these things. Last week we started the conversation, and I'm sure you've heard more after you've been making oh, the round. Oh, I've heard. Uh, tell me, thank you. I've heard, I've read, and people keep sending us their opinions and what they think. But tell me, let me spend five minutes and explain to you the entire situation. Then we can look at the terms of the agreement again. We may not have enough time. Yeah, no, we will not complete today. As okay. I said, this is an important national exercise. Tell me, seventy percent of the world's reserves of lithium is found in three countries. Just three countries, Argentina, Chile, and Bolivia, where their boundaries, if you like, for want of a better word, converge. The, it's called the lithium triangle. Just three countries. As we speak, Australia is the biggest producer of lithium in the world. Close to about the, the half of the world's production comes from Australia currently. Okay? 
you need to understand that. And then uh, you have uh, Zimbabwe, which has the largest reserves in Africa, and number six in the world. They have the likes of Mali that have bigger deposits than us. So I want the general public to understand that when you are making a decision concerning lithium or minerals, you have to look at the global situation. Existing protocols. You have to look at your reserves. You don't sit here as an island and think that, oh, I have lithium, so for me, I'm taking this. Um, take Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is by far and large the biggest producer of oil in the world. They are doing about 10 million barrels or 12 a day. In Ghana, barely that's 200,000. Nigeria is doing maybe a million or more. So the kind of decisions Saudi Arabia can make, you cannot sit here and make it because you don't have the kind of deposit or reserve they have. Even Nigeria. Even Nigeria cannot make certain decisions, you know, Saudi Arabia will make. So if the Saudis say, their minister for oil comes out and say, we're going to pump more oil, trust me, prices will drop. Or we're going to pull two, three million barrels of oil from the world market. It will, you know, shake the system. So you cannot treat yourself as an island. Now, you have to look at, the before that, the agreement is not available on our website. People have requested for it, we are giving it to them. Even some of them have requested for a roundtable discussion. And I think I love that. That shows how things have become transparent and how we have changed. Let's take the issues one after the other. So it's like a recap. Take royalty. Royalty is paid to the owner of the mineral. Terma, outside Chile, we have the highest royalty rate for lithium in the world. Chile's royalty is between 8 to 26 percent. Okay? Then Ghana comes with 10%. Australia, Mali, DRC, they all don't have royalty more than 6%. So more or less, that is an increment from the current 5% we have in our law to 10%. So if this is not a killer or a huge, uh, what do you call it, uh, something government has negotiated, I don't know what it is. Now, maybe somebody asks, why don't you also go the Chilean way? But Ch well, Chile has 40% of the reserves in the world. One country. Monkey play by sizes. So for our size, you see? it's good. Well, and okay. then our... So that is it. So for we have 10% royalty. That's mm -hmm. number one. Then there was a particular levy that was passed by parliament just this year. Around March, April, there about. They call it the growth and stabilization levy. 1%. Okay, so that has also been put in the agreement. So effectively, that takes royalty to even 11%. So, and then the GSA, the stabilization level, you can't even deduct it. You pay it up front, whether you're making profit or not. So if you ask me 11%, then there's another 1% for the community. When we did the mathematics, you're talking about over $6 million annually, even at the, the price that we use for the feasibility. So these are some of the financials. If you compare this, to the current projects we have for gold and other minerals over the years, I mean, this is by far a great thing that government has done. You understand that? Our corporate tax is 35, Mali has 30%. So let me just do a quick comparison. There's a project in Mali called Gulamina. It's three times the size of a where their royalty is no more than 6%. So I've been seeing what people are seeing, people are re reading, people are reacting. And, and, then, and some of it is also coming from the communities where this lithium will be mined. And so the, the conversation again becomes how involved were the local uh, traditional authorities in this process right, and what do they get? Right from day one, the communities have been involved. The companies have been engaging the community. The company, Minerals Commission, we've had a fantastic relationship with the WIA community and all those things. The community, every year, 1% of revenue will be set aside for, to take care of the community development programs. They, they will decide what they want. The community, those who are students, those who are going to school and doing the STEM, they're entitled to be employed. That has also been uh, you know, negotiated. That is it. Now, the worry of Ghanaians are the other things that we are in, we find in the agreement and people are not looking at it and they are just talking about oh the government is boasting about 10 percent right of course that's a great deal if you compare yourself to other people take value addition if you read the agreement if you look at schedule 2 page 23 i think i've sent it to you it says that 
the company will establish a chemical plant after the report comes out on the project economics. And the event they are not able to do it, a third party will establish it and they are bound to sell to it. That is it. So for value addition. Yes, yeah, so they cannot come and tell us that oh we are not going to process or we are not in the process of processing lithium. We have agreed, it's been certain into the agreement that in the event you are not ready to do it, a third party will do it. Therma, the backlash, the 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 criticism from Ghanaians is that foreigners own the mines. So you take Angu Ashanti is owned by South Africans. Mm. You take Newmont is owned by Americans. So foreigners take uh, they come here, come and take the, the minerals and take it away. One they said they take it raw without processing, without adding value. So we don't get the benefit mm -hmm. of the full chain. And then ownership is also in their hands. Now we are saying the state and Ghana should also participate in two ways. First, the shareholding of the state has moved from 10 to 13%. The MIF, which is the sovereign wealth fund, is putting in money, about $32 million, for a 9% stake, six locally and three internationally. So the, the state participation alone goes to what? 19%. And then now, we have made it mandatory for them to list on the stock exchange. Two, three months ago, I came to make that noise here. So it is now an opportunity for the likes of you, everyone, when they start floating shares, for you to go and buy so through the stock exchange, Ghanaians who own shares. Then you have the state also owning shares, what they get, you know, freely. And also government investing money through MIF in it. So at the end of the day, the ownership take of, you know, the people of Ghana and the state has increased than this thing that we've been doing over the years. Okay? Now they are supposed to establish a chemical plant to refine the spodument or the concentrate, failing which... If a third party should do that, you are bound by the agreement to sell to them. When we sit again next week, perhaps we can look into the agreement a bit more because there are portions for offenses and then we have to also interrogate this uh, place that we are calling a mortgage system. I see that in, in the agreement as well. I want to understand. So perhaps when we sit next week... But we have not we exhausted go, the terms yet. So we will we'll, go into yes, the terms a bit yes, more and then we'll look yes, at Yes, because areas. we have just barely scratched the surface. Yes. So it's a date then? Yes, yes. So we are, we are here the week. entire November to discuss the terms and so that we, people will get to know. You What's see? your parting comment for today's chat? Oh, my, my, my parting... The budget statement is being um, delivered to... Oh, we, we, we are all looking for some lovely things in the, the budget. The Ministry of Lands... You, you of course, there are, thing, there are things in mining there. I, I, I want to believe the finance minister will talk about lithium and these green minerals because that is a new thing. Or Ghana's new one found wealth. But Tema, I employ every Ghanaian that anybody who wants information about mining in Ghana, just call Minerals Commission. Send us an email, we will respond. Enough of the misrepresentation and the falsehood. Mr. So, so Martin, that's, that's my statement. AC call, is call the, the CEO Commission. of the Minerals Commission. You can reach the Minerals Commission across their social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, everywhere. Look for Minerals Commission Ghana. You can get this interview on those platforms as well. Thank you for sitting with us. Mr. AC, all the best to you. We'll see you again next week for our next chat. CEO of Minerals Commission bringing us to the end of this segment. There's some sugar on that.